Now here we go, we're gonna get right into this video. Today we're gonna follow up with you guys on the beehives that we split. You guys remember the last time that Dr. Leo visited our farm, uh, we took a couple of the hives from the horizontal hives and we split them into two. And today we're following up with that. We're gonna see how the eggs were doing for the queens, see if they hatched, what's going on inside the hives and also uh, put them in their permanent homes. If you're new to our channel, my name's Doug, my wife's name's Stacy, and we live in a log cabin on 11 acres where we grow and harvest most of our own food. And a lot of the things that we do here on our channel is all about like living self-sustainable, like we grow uh, our own food, we harvest it, we ferment it, we have a root cellar, uh, we have bees for honey and also to help pollinate all of our land around us. And a lot of times uh, with our bees, we bring in our friend, Dr. Leo, uh, who helps us walk through some of these horizontal hive setups because these are all new to us. We've been uh, beekeeping uh, for about eight years and most of it's been in vertical hives and now we went horizontal. So this is our friend, Dr. Leo. He has a bunch of great resources for you guys and he's gonna tell you about those right now. Yes, thank you, Doug. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to come here. It's a five-hour drive for me, but I always look forward to coming here. It's like having a short vacation. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm Dr. Leo Sharashkin. I'm founder of HorizontalHive.com website that has free plans and, adv and advice on keeping your bees natural in horizontal hives. Uh, I also edited a number of books to help you get started, uh, including the one that we are now practicing here in live, Keeping Bees in Horizontal Hides by Layans, and another one, Keeping Bees with a Smile. Uh, these books uh, show you how to have simplified beekeeping that's productive, but it's literally with a smile instead of putting a lot of strain on you and on the bees while you are handling all these heavy boxes. You have the bees in horizontal hives like this one, and the methods described there are so simple, you can be successful them from the get-go. For example, a month ago I was visiting Doug and we separated the colony in this hive in two parts and now we'll see whether they were successful in establishing two colonies instead of one. And the beauty of the method described in keeping bees are in horizontal hives, we didn't even need to find the queen for that. Yeah. So it's all about healthful beekeeping that's respectful of the bees and doesn't hurt your back and also the one that's just super simple. Yeah, and if you guys remember, if you caught the video right before this one is um, the hive that we split in this box actually created a queen and then they actually did a fly off, did a swarm. So we've actually gotten three hives out of this. I just couldn't keep the other ones put. Uh, they actually did take off. So we're gonna go into this hive right now. We're gonna show you guys what's going on and then we're gonna explain to you what's the next step. All right, so this is where we left this hive uh, four weeks ago. And there uh, we separated the frames in two parts, opened another entrance, so now there are two active entrances. We made sure there were eggs in both sides of the hive. Actually, this one had their queen cells from which new queens would hatch. We made sure there were some queen cells on each side of this divider board and there, then we'll have the bees alone for four weeks, which is significant. After four weeks, as you go into the hive, if you see brood, which means eggs, larvae, or capped cells where the bees are being transformed into adult bees, so if you see that on each side of the divider, that means you have now two laying queens and you essentially have two colonies instead of one. Again, one of the advantages of the horizontal hive layout is that all of the frames here are on one level. In a regular vertical hive, in order to check for brood in the lowest box, you regularly need to remove additional boxes on top of this upper uh, lower box. That means a lot of lifting for you and quite a bit of disturbance for the bees. So you slide these frames apart and then you lift one up. And lo and behold, there, here is proof that we have a laying queen in this compartment. This is sealed brood, looks like sandpaper coverings. There are larvae of the bees inside undergoing the metamorphosis into a dull bee. So without finding the queen, we already know that this part of the hive uh, requeened itself. The, re the new queen went and mated with the drone successfully and now she is a new mother of the new colony. 
So Doug, with this, uh, we need to decide what to do with this new hive and we have several options. So when you say options, what do you mean by that? Well, it depends on your priorities and what you want to accomplish with the bees. Uh, uh, the simplest way to go, now that you have two colonies in the box, uh, there are two open entrances, is to just add additional frames in each compartment and fill them up so that the bees have more room to build additional calm and expand. But with this setup, a month from now, both parts of the hive will run out of room yeah. and you will have to transfer one of the halves into a hive of its own. What it does though, it buys you another month of time instead of for giving them another hive right now, you just delay it by one month. Right. Another option is to give them a separate hive, taking all of these frames and putting it in another hive next door. And the advantage of it is we do it and then both colonies have plenty of room for yep. expanding and then bringing in the harvest of uh, honey, especially now that we see clover oil and bloom all around us. Yeah, and the only reason why we'll go with option number two is because we have the boxes now and we're ready to go. Sometimes when you guys are doing this, um, you won't have that opportunity, so it's always good to know ways that you can buy a little extra time so you can maybe get your equipment or gear together or build another box. So that was a good tip right there. So. Yeah, we're definitely going to be moving these into their own box next door. Very good, but there is another thing that I wanted to suggest. Um, some people who watched the previous videos are asking me why am I using hives that are different from yours. I also use horizontal hives, but you use these frames. Right. And I use the European style frames that are narrow and deep like this. Right. And the reason you are using these frames is that when we converted your hives into these last year, you already had the standard American equipment. Right. So it made sense for you to use this particular style of frame. However, for 100 years now, it's been noted that bees and horizontal hives actually do better on the shape of frame that's more consistent with how they live in nature, in narrow, deep tree hollows. I see. And actually, there was research done by a university in Europe that compared the productivity of bees in a hive like that and in a horizontal hive like this, and this developed better and produced more honey. Uh, all other things being equal, just wow. the shape of the frame uh, made so much difference. So there, this European style frame is called Layens frame, L-A-Y-E-N-S, after the author of Keeping Bees in Horizontal Hives, who first introduced the horizontal hives with this style frame, which is the most widely used uh, hive in the world. Right. So what I suggest we do today, instead of just giving this uh, colony a hive of its own, Let's transfer them in a hive that uses these frames because then you'll be able to compare the two setups side by side. Right. When I did for a number of years in my location in southern Missouri in the Ozarks, I saw that this was so superior to the conventional length of hive that off. I switched all of my hives to that. Right. That's good. It's always good to experiment. Then so then how does that work? Will we just put those in the box and then build the rest with this? Or will we, act, I mean, you can't really actually transfer them off of those frames. Yeah, the frames are not directly compatible. Uh, so what we will do, we will cut them with the saw oh. so that this part of the frame fits inside this oh. new frame and we'll nest it and I just see. screw it in. And all the new frames will add into the high will already be this format. So all the new uh, frames they will be building on this style of foundation. And uh, we'll take it from there and compare. Sounds like we have some work to do. <laughs> I brought you a couple of horizontal lanes hives that use this European style for format for the frames. And I also built you uh, two of the stands for these hives. It's a very simple project. But one thing I wanted to point out that I like using red cedar lumber for the stands because it is naturally rot resistant. Uh, you don't want to use any treated lumber around your bees because they may lick up some liquid from the surface of the treated lumber and it will end up in your honey. But uh, red cedar will last 30 to 50 years and they're uh, wonderful wood to work with. And also amazingly most of the red cedar around here that's harvested it's not even being used by lumber but is mulched for producing mulch. So you can use this wonderful local resource that's good for the bees and good for the planet too. When you set up uh, a stand for the hive, the only thing you need to check is whether it's level. Uh, bees build calm according to gravity. 
So having a level and making sure that uh, the foundation for the hive is completely level will produce nice and straight of honeycomb for you. We are setting the new stand close to the existing hive because once this colony is transferred into a new hive, they will need to reorient and find the new door to their new home. So the entrance to this new hive needs to be really, really close to their current entrance so that the foragers can easily locate it. The only other precaution really is to make sure that your stand is level. It will help bees build very straight comb as they build according to gravity straight down. So this is almost perfect on. Uh, if you had to adjust it, uh, then you could put some flat stones under the legs. And make sure the stand is leaning a little bit forward rather than backward and being flat. This is significant because the water running down the front wall of the hive will be entering through the entrance if the stand is leaning backward. So right now it's leaning backward. So in addition to it being level from left to right, we do want it to be leaning forward just a little bit to shed rainwater. Flat stones really help. This is perfect. Yeah, that's a very nice setup. Yeah, just as the first box, this one is built out of solid pine. This is why it's quite heavy. But this extra thickness of the walls compared to the standard thin walled American hives provides the insulation that is right. very valuable for the bees, both in the winter and in the heat of the summer. And then that little hole down there is just a little uh, vent. And, yeah, additional ventilation. Sure. We've set everything up. We have the hive on the stand. It's level left to right and leaning forward just a little bit to shed water from the front wall. And the, right there, I'd like to draw your attention to one big distinction between the horizontal hive that takes regular American Langstroth frames, like this, and the Lyons horizontal hive, the original horizontal hive invented in Europe by George de Lyons, author of Keeping Bees in Horizontal Hives. Because the frames that you are using with conventional American horizontal hives were designed to allow bees to go into the next box up, they have a gap between the top bars. So when you open a horizontal hive with standard American frames, then uh, you're exposing all the bees between the frames. And this is why you need the special cover boards uh, on top of these to contain the disturbance. With the Lanes horizontal hive, because there are no additional boxes uh, to put on top, by design the top bars are made to touch. So when you open a hive like that, you don't see any bees, you don't disturb any bees except the ones that are on the frame you are working with. And what you are about to see is probably most uh, disruptive operation in natural beekeeping you will see. but. Uh, it is uh, quick and definitive and if you are not comfortable with cutting the comb and embedding it into these frames uh, as I will show, on horizontalhive.com there are also plans for making a jig that without cutting this frame just rotates at 90 degrees so you can insert it temporarily into the hive without cutting. But then the procedure for the transfer is not as reliable and takes much much longer. Here we're just cutting and nesting the, these frames into this one. We will be done in 20 minutes. So we need to go uh, through the frames in the horizontal Langstroth hive. And you can of course transfer your Langstroth nook or a regular Langstroth vertical hive into horizontal length hive using the same technique. You only need to transfer the frames with brood on them. The honey you can feed to the bees using a feeder afterwards. So you take out a frame and take a look whether it has any brood on it. 
Okay, so here is an empty frame just with some foundation transformed into calm. We don't need to cut this, so we can put it aside for now. Now we go to the next frame. That is a big fat frame with lots of honey on top. There is only honey on this side. And uh, there is some brood on this side. That means we can go ahead and we can uh, cut this frame. Not only that, we have a little surprise on this side. There, e there is a capped queen cell on this frame. Yeah. So that means that this colony has plans of uh, swarming again. And remember the history of this one is that uh, it is headed by the queen from the south, from the state of Mississippi. And southern bees are much more inclined to swarm than northern bees. So it's not really surprising them trying to swarm many times over during the summer. Anyway, so here is a frame with brood on this side. So we'll transfer them into the new hive. But I will start with the frames that have less honey and more brood on them because cutting honey is uh, very messy. It starts running and bees become more uh, agitated. The less honey on the frame, the easier it is to cut. This frame has lots of brood on it and it also has a sealed queen cell on it, meaning the colony is really set on swarming again, even though they had queen cells capped and ready to go just uh, four weeks ago. Now they have a new queen and they want to swarm again, which makes sense because in nature they are not really honeybees in the sense of uh, making honey for us. Their main objective is to be fruitful and multiply. So as long as they have resources to sw swarm repeatedly during the summer, they will certainly go for it. Before you start the transfer, it's not a bad idea to go through the entire hive and make an inventory of frames to know how many frames of brood there you have, just to make sure you have prepared the sufficient number of the new size frames. And there, if during this inventory you spot the queen, it's also a good idea to grab her and put her aside in any container out of the sun so she is not accidentally damaged during the transfer. You don't have to do it because uh, the queen will usually be fine and of course we'll be shaking and uh, swiping all the bees off the frames before we do our cuts but it's additional guarantee that she will not accidentally be lost as we are transferring the frames from one hive into the other. So right now I'm on frame number four and out of four frames we have uh, three frames are full of brood which explains why the colony is making plans to swarm again. Uh, because of this divider here the space available to them is relatively small and they've practically grew out of this uh, space becoming congested and this is a trigger for swarming again. Another frame of brood.
with uh, two sealed queen cells. So if you would like, Doug, we could make more splits right there. And instead of four hives, you might now have eight. Do you want to go for it? <laughs> Another frame that they just started drawing out. And you see that Doug is using uh, frames with plastic foundation. And they give you the convenience of ordering the frame and it arrives like that with this plastic foundation for the comb already embedded in it. Uh, it has another ironic advantage of uh, being free from pesticide because most of the wax foundation sold in America, if not all, uh, has pesticide in it from contamination that bees or commercial bees bring into the hive. Uh, but I only use natural wax foundation and to get very clean wax free of pesticide I imported from the mountains in Spain where bees forage on uh, wilderness crops away from our commercial agriculture. And I think I'm seeing the queen. There she is. And it's great that uh, we spotted her because I want to set her aside there during the transfer to minimize the chance of hurting her. You don't have to have a specific uh, queen cage around. I just picked up uh, a plastic cup on the side of the road when coming here. If you put her in any transparent container Please make sure it's kept out of the sun. But she will be fine in there, in there during our transferring procedure. When you grab the queen, always grab the queen by the thorax, which is the central part of your body when the wings are attached. Don't grab her by the abdomen, because this is where all of her egg-laying apparatus is located. You could uh, damage her by grabbing her by the abdomen. So I'm putting this cup with the queen into the new hive in the shade. And she will be saved there while we are transferring the frames. Once the frames with brood are in the new box, we will release the queen and it will also be additional attractant for all of the remaining bees to join her in the new box. Very good, I'm ready to start cutting. All right, so here we are ready to transfer the frames from the horizontal Langstroth hive or any hive containing standard American Langstroth frames. Sir. They are 19 inch top bar by 9 and 1 8 deep into the Layens frames that are 14 inch top bar by 16 deep, narrower and deeper the way bees live in nature. All right, so take a frame and you will shake them and swipe them into the new hive. Just very sharp movement down. And then you swipe the remaining bees in. And here we go fairly quickly, especially because we know that the queen is not on this frame. 
While you are working on the empty frame, no bees, you are prepared to do the cutting. It's a good idea to cover the hive so all the bees that were shaken down there stay in there. Okay, now we take this frame. We need to mark where the cuts will be. The cut is 12 inches wide for this transfer because we are transferring into the lane style frame. So it will be from this edge 12 inches in and I just mark with the knife where the cut will be. The first thing I do, I cut off this slug so it's not in the way. And now I cut uh, through the entire frame with foundation, wax, uh, everything in the, in the way. This whole frame is then nested into the lens frame, centered and attached with some drywall screws. to be the Langstroth frame inside the lens frame. If it's out of the plane, then use the third screw to straighten, straighten it. If it's out of the plane, use another third screw so it stays within the plane of the lens frame. and then give it to the bees and the new hive as fast as you can. They will continue working and they will expand their comb downward filling out the rest of the frame. Repeat this with the rest of the frames that have brood on them. Take this frame. We shake the bees off into the new hive. Cover the hive, we go and do the cut. Please do save these cutoffs because you will see we'll, we will install them into frames too, so nothing will be wasted. This is my template, a piece of uh, board, plywood, that I use for marking where the cut will be made. Drywall screws work better here than our construction screws or 
deck screws because drywall screws are thinner and they don't split the wood as much. So with them you don't really need to pre-drill. Alright, again check if it's in, in the plane. With this one it's so perfectly lined inside the lane's new frame that you do not need to drive an additional third screw in here even though you could. One reason you may want to put this third screw anyway is for additional strength during extraction. When eventually you extract honey from this uh, frame it will be spinning and having this locked in here will provide additional support. Repeat it with another frame with brood. Take all of the bees. Not all the frames are that had brood on them. The cutoffs we did save and now whatever cutoffs have uh, brood on them we will install two inside each of the frames the same as we did with the main part of the frame. Now the two cutoffs are fit straight into the lens frame. So we will just attach each of them with two screws and give them back to the bees. The transfer is practically complete. We transferred all the frames that had brood on it and the remaining bees that stay in this box will actually go back to the other compartment when we remove the divider board. So any bees remaining on the frames that have no brood on it, I'm just uh, shaking and swiping into the new hive. And it may seem brutal to you to do this to the bees, but remember that the bees are like one big organism. I'm not hurting the big organism in doing so. And actually it's quite safe for individual bees too. But we preserved the queen, we gave them a new big home. So in natural beekeeping, it's still beekeeping. There are things you need to do from time to time that may look like disturbance to the bees. But if you came here tomorrow, you wouldn't even be able to tell that this hive was transferred. So all the frames that have no brood on them don't need to be transferred. It saves you time and you can uh, eliminate these frames on the spot. I feel a bee crawling under my shirt, so I'll release her. Okay, off she goes. Now look inside here, all of these bees are, will are, be looking for the queen that we will now release and they will fly out and return to this box after we close the entrance to the original uh, hive. Okay, we have the queen that was sitting there in this container. Make sure there is no soda left in there before I introduce her. So now that the transfer is complete, look how neat it is. The top bars touch, so we added a few more frames with foundation on this end in front of the entrance to give this colony room to grow. An additional couple of frames of foundation on this far end from the entrance. And now we'll just spread apart a couple of frames with brood and we'll introduce the frame, uh, the, the, the queen, back in there. So I'm spreading the frames where the brood is. 
and aware, be aware that the young queens like this one that hatched within the last month can actually fly off so when you release her point the cup downward so she actually goes in there inside rather than flying off in she went so now I'm sliding the frames back together I'm adding another frame foundation here and we are ready to close the hive uh, with this one you only want one entrance to be open and you can stop the other entrance with anything like a small piece of board or a piece of uh, thick plastic be aware that if you use any wood here the bees may propolize it so it will be difficult to take out so don't push it all the way in just a little bit to block the entrance and then when you need to open it in the future you'll be able to pull it and reopen it and we are closing the original entrance to this box because we want to compel all the foragers to return to this new home next door as long as you leave this entrance open they will not know that uh, this is no longer their home and that the whole colony has moved to the apartment next door again you can put anything here to block it uh, a board or even thick plastic like a ziplock bag something that blocks the entrance completely but is relatively easy to take out in the future when you need to I avoid putting cloth in there because the bees will chew into the cloth and then the rainwater will soak it and the inside of the entrance will start uh, uh, rotting so this door is closed this one is open all the forage is returning and seeing that they have no access to the uh, previous location of the hive will start looking for where it moved and because of the smell of the queen here they will eventually find this location and by tomorrow morning all the foragers will be returning here so I'm replacing the carver on this side and you will want to put a stone on top or to prevent it from being blown, blown off, off by the wind yeah. and now with all of the bees we could try and chase them out of here with smoke but alternatively we will just remove this divider and let them go back to their original colony and that's what we are going to do all right we're replacing the cover boards and see how during the entire procedure we didn't even touch the uh, right hand side their colony all of the bees continued to forage there and until we removed the divider board they didn't even know that the hive had been opened and worked on and since we are here anyway uh, let me open this part and see how they are doing we may need to add a few more frames with foundation in front of the entrance to give them more room oh yeah the frames with foundation we added a month ago uh, being well built out with calm and honey here are the frames that we added uh, four weeks ago and the bees are drawing out calm and filling it with their honey so they transform just foundation into the wax comb so we'll add a couple more frames so they can keep doing it now that the good honey flow from clover is on the way so I'm pushing the frames into the depth of the hive and I will return to them one of these frames we took from this other hive and then one more frame before closing the hive for today 
I just give it a few puffs of smoke to make sure there are no bees trapped between the cover boards and the top and not smashed in the process. Okay, mission accomplished. Well, I think that one went relatively smooth. It did. All right, guys, now we're in the hive that we keep in the forest. We have several different hives on our property and this horizontal hive is what we call the forest hive and we have it deep in the woods here. As you can see, it's still doing really good. It's very strong. Even though we split it and put another, uh, put the other part of it with the new queen cells and everything behind you, which we're gonna show you guys in a second. I just wanted to show you guys that even after splitting this hive, it's still really strong and they're doing really, really good. There's no need to peel into it today. Uh, so stay tuned for a future video when we start extracting honey out of it. Uh, but I just wanted to pass by here and let you see that. And actually, you know, when you see bees bearding like that, uh, you can tell that the hive is so strong that, as I mentioned a month ago, we could have made more than one split off of it. Right. In the old days it was called artificial swarming, and in nature a strong hive like that can cast two or three swarms. So we could safely split it a month ago in two or three parts. So if your priority is to increase the number of your hives, or to sell local queens with local bees, which may be even more profitable than selling honey, then with hives like that you can safely do it early in the spring. Man, it really is looking good. All right, we're gonna get some equipment and then we're gonna take you guys over to this other little hive that we split. Uh, before we get started with this hive, I wanted to talk with you for a second about uh, different hive models and differences in materials and layouts for hives. This is the standard American Langstroth hive that consists of boxes three quarter inch thick that you stack one on top of the other. Three quarter inch thick is very little insulation. This is why the previous hive that we had there in the pasture is built out of twice as much wood in the walls, one and a half inch thick. But the one we'll be transferring this hive into, the same Lance hive with the European style narrow and deep frames, is even better because in addition to the more natural uh, frame size, this box is also built double walled with the wool insulation in the walls. Even Langstroth himself, the inventor of the most popular American uh, Langstroth hive, was emphasizing in his book the importance of insulation because in nature bees live in cavities with lots of wood around their nest that protects them from the extremes of temperature not only in the winter for the north but from the heat in the summer too you notice that this other hive is bearding that means the bees are still overheating even with 1.5 inch of solid wood in the walls now this hive has a natural wool insulation inside the wall like that so it's built out of ecological plywood that has no formaldehyde glue in it and there, outside the inner casing there is one and a half inch of natural wool and then the front wall is attached over the wool so you have the same kind of structure as we have in our homes the framework and then insulation inside with one and a half inches of wool uh, in the walls the insulation value of this box is actually equal to seven and a half inches of wood or ten times the insulation value of the conventional Langstroth hive five times more insulation value than the hives built out of 1.5 inch boards so with this additional insulation the bees will be much better protected from the extremes of temperature in the winter and in the summer so this is my favorite hive model this is what i use the most myself and this is what i recommend for pretty much any climate because it is as important to protect the bees are uh, from the cold in the north in the winter as it is important to protect them from the stress of heat in the summer in the south.
So this is how this hive is built and there are free plans for building it on horizontalhive.com. I brought it for demonstration to show you the inside of this white box before it was finished. So you build the inner box, then you put lots of this good insulation. And you know my wife bought me a wool blanket that cost $500 and when I put it on the scale there is exactly the same amount of wool in this $500 blanket as in this beehive. So it's really the Rolls Royce of a beehive for the bees and protecting them from temperature. Okay, so you have these double walls, then it will be nailed there and painted and you will have this finished hive that you see on your right. So once this whole box is assembled and painted and the corners protected with steel angles to prevent moisture from uh, penetrating into the end grain of the plywood, the entrances are drilled and they have the gates that rotate like that. You can open any gate, put it into ventilation setting, completely open it. And this is the main door for the hive. And for the winter, you can put the mouse excluder with these openings that allow the bees to come and go during the warm spells in the winter, but the mice won't be able to go into the hive and make a mess there. The reason for the three openings is that first, you could make artificial swarms or splits inside the same box by opening an additional entrance and putting a divider, like what we did with these two hives a month ago. All it takes is opening an additional entrance and putting a divider separating the colony into two parts. Also, by shifting the position of the entrance, you can steer the development of the colony. They tend to have the brood chamber in, in front of the open entrance. So, for example, if the brood chamber is here and this entrance is open, during the season I can gradually open other entrances. First I open this one and close the original one. The bees reorient and start using this one. And the brood chamber position shifts here. The reason we are doing that is that the very old black frames that had been used many times for rearing brood and become contaminated with bacteria can be cycled out of the hive at the end of the season when they will be filled with honey. You can do so by opening these entrances and forcing, or let's say, enticing the brood chamber to shift this way once they abandon the frames that were originally filled with brood and stuff them with honey at the end of the season you can remove this with no disturbance and cycle the very dark black comb out of the colony there is an additional description of how these entrances can be used and manipulated in keeping bees with the smile book 2020 edition and we'll cover them more in the subsequent videos too. These uh, gate discs are made out of stainless steel, so they will never corrode, never rust, and will last longer than this box or you and me. And if you are building this hive yourself from the free plans on horizontalhive.com, you can order these discs from horizontalhive.com too. These are very, very convenient. You can use them on the hives and also on the swarm traps. If you catch a swarm, and your swamp trap is equipped with an opening like that all it takes is rotating it into the ventilation position when you catch a swarm and ready to bring it home now we are ready to look at this hive this is an artificial swarm or splitter that we made four weeks ago from that other hive 30 feet from here we took uh, six frames from the original hive. We made sure that some of the frames had eggs so that the bees in this book, uh, box could raise themselves a new queen once they sense themselves uh, queenless. And uh, we made sure they also had their honey and pollen to last them a month until they have a new queen and have new brood going. All right. The reason for waiting four weeks before opening your artificial swarm hive is that once you split the colony, it takes the bees 12 days to raise a new queen, so it's two weeks. Then the queen needs to mature for another week before she goes on mating flights and mates with drones. And then a few more days for her to return and start laying eggs there. 
So after four weeks you are able to look in there and see whether there is any brood at all. If there is brood, even without seeing the actual queen, you know that the colony has a queen. If there is no brood whatsoever, you know that the split has failed. It could happen for a number of reasons. One of them, the queen just didn't return from the mating flight and was uh, eaten by a bird, for example. Because we are wanting to transfer these bees into a different hive, and we'll be cutting the frames as we did on the previous one. Uh, as we go through, if I can see the queen, I will isolate her so as to not uh, hurt her during the transfer. So start with the frames that are the least busy and take them out. So this is foundation we added a month ago and because the hive was very small at the time, they really didn't work on it, which is normal. They were busy raising themselves a new queen. If you are going into a hive and uh, you are hoping to find the queen, as we do now, it's best to use as little smoke as possible because the smoke may disturb the queen and she will run off the frame and hide in the corner of the hive or on one of the walls, making it more difficult to spot her. So the new comb that she's there building. As you go through the frames, we're looking to see whether there is brood and the queen is more likely to be seen on these frames with young brood, which means tiny eggs that look like small grains of rice at the bottom of the cells and also larva, the white grubs at the cells filled with royal jelly. Yeah, there is a little bit of open brood on this frame, but mostly it's honey and lots, lots of nectar. So even as this colony was uh, raising themselves a new queen, the foragers were busy foraging and because they didn't have any brood to feed during this month, all this nectar was not being wasted, it was being stored as honey. So you see the top of this frame is completely capped already. So it will be a good honey frame in six weeks or so. Again, another good frame of nectar. Pollen or bee bread, fermented pollen that they use as a source of protein for feeding the brood. and more pollen here. As we are transferring this hive into a new uh, high, uh, box, we'll need to make sure that we give them plenty of room because in addition to storing all these reserves, they really need more room now to make fresh calm and to produce more brood. Yeah, we definitely have a queen in this hive. Uh, there is a uh, brood, eggs and tiny larvae at the bottom of the cells on uh, the side of this frame facing you. So see, we made two splits six, mm, uh, week, four weeks ago. So see, we made four, See, we made two splits four weeks ago and both of them are, are successful. That means 100% success rate and instead of two original hives are four weeks ago, we now have four.
Yes, there is more bird on this frame too. So we are ready to transfer this hive in their new home, which I know they will be really happy with. The best protection you can have from the heat and the cold in the winter. And there are plenty of room to grow, have uh, a good brood nest for themselves, store enough honey for themselves for the winter, and produce a good crop for Doug and Stacy. We are ready to do the transfer and since uh, we are removing this existing hive altogether it's really best to put the new hive in exactly the same spot as the original hive was in so that all of the foragers returning to the spot they remember as the entrance to their hive find the entrance to their new box and the whole transfer will go easier because any bees flying here will be returning to this spot instead of trying to locate the new entrance to the home. So let's move it a few feet away and put this new hive on the stand and level it in the spot this one now is. And see with this method you don't need to find a queen. We didn't notice the queen going through these frames. We know she is there because yeah. we saw eggs and brood. Right. If we didn't find her she just goes for a ride with the rest of them. Right, so you guys will see both ways. One, we found the queen and isolated her and then re-added her back. And then this one here, we're just gonna take all the frames, transform them into the new box and everything will be just fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which way? Uh, just forward, a couple of feet. Just enough to put the new box in exactly the same spot. So let's take it off. And put the stand there and level it. Yeah. Well, the ants are already building a nest, aren't they? The ants like living under the beehives because all of the dead bees that are being oh, discarded yeah. are being eaten up by the ants. Right. Now again, you guys want to make sure that your stand is level, just like we talked about at the other uh, hive. Yeah, and it needs a couple of flat stones on this side. And we brought some with us. Mm -hmm. Like this one goes here. <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. Okay, now making sure that it's a little bit leaning forward. With this uh, insulated hive, it's not as important as with the solid wood one because these openings have been drilled at an incline. So even if it is uh, not leaning forward a little bit, which this stand does. But if it was completely level, it would still shed water. Now, even with the uh, vertical hives, the old hives that we use, uh, you always want to have those slightly tilted forward as well. Absolutely. Yeah, so basically all hives, you want slightly tilted forward. <laughs> oh, that's the penthouse. It is. Okay. So of the three entrances, the one that we leave open is the one closest to the spot where the original entrance was. Let's do it this way. So this one is open, the other two are completely closed. Now would you ever actually start a hive off using the middle entrance or would you always like to use the end so that way it can be the brood and then on to the... Yeah, I like doing it from one end with smaller colonies like this one. Right. This way, instead of having all of this expanse on both sides of it, it has a wall, so it can snugly start from one wall and build out this all way. Right. Makes sense. With very strong colonies, you can install them in the middle too. Good. Stand by. So I have some empty frames prepared here to receive the cut frames from the original box that we'll be transferring. Uh, also, if you don't have much honey inside the frames that you are transferring, you can give it to the bees later by putting it in a feeder like that. So it's called the Layens Frame Feeder. It has ripped surface inside so the bees have a good purchase with their legs and don't drown. Again, you don't need to transfer the actual honeycomb because it starts running and it's just messy to transfer then brood frames. 
and if you don't transfer enough on the combs and on the frames you can give them some food this way the same is useful when you just purchased a nuke of bees in the spring that comes on standard length trough frames and if you want to put them into layings frames do give them some food in a feeder like that so if you want to use this feeder to feed your bees you can dilute honey with a little bit of water so it's runny I would say eight parts are honey, two parts water and pour it straight in there. And use the precautions uh, for feeding that are described in keeping bees in horizontal hives. For example, if your colony is not very strong, add the feed at, the, at night, almost at nightfall, so that uh, there is no chance of robbing and bees from other hives especially if there is no nectar in nature do not come and do not steal this food from this colony uh, another precaution is that if you are not feeding your own honey unfortunately it's not safe to feed honey from a store it may have spores of foul brood or other contagious disease and there it can be transferred to this colony through feeding bees honey so if you are just starting and you have absolutely no other option, it's actually safer to feed bees or certified organic sugar 50-50 to water as an exception uh, than to, um, set, uh, to feed them commercial honey. If you know a local beekeeper and you can get local honey after talking to the beekeeper and making sure they didn't have any foul brood in the last few years, then this honey would probably also be safe to feed. But please uh, be very cautious with, um, and uh, don't introduce uh, any potential disease into the hive with the feed. And so now we are ready to do the actual transfer. We have frames ready to accept the frames. The feeder will probably not be necessary now. After we do the transfer, because this is a relatively small colony, we'll restrict the volume of this box or with this divider uh, so that they have less room to heat and protect and temperature regulate and as the colony outgrows the original few frames that we give them we'll move this divider board sideways and add more frames this is something you only need to do with the small colonies like a small swarm that you caught or a package of bees that you installed or this new split colony that we are installing for a very strong colony it's not necessary except putting it in for the winter when you removed all of these frames with honey you don't want just this empty cold volume to be there and the bees losing the heat from their brood chamber you'll insert it here at the end of the year just before the winter sets in after you harvest frames of honey but for now we will put it in to restrict the volume of the hive for this uh, very young small colony The whole procedure will be similar to what we saw uh, with the previous hive. We just take frames from there, put the bees here, cut the comb and put the frames here. The only big distinction is that with this hive we didn't notice the queen when going through the other box, which is fine. We'll be just shaking and swiping all the bees here and make sure that you handle all the frames above the original hive and above this one so you don't accidentally drop the queen into the grass. You can use a variety of tools for cutting the comb. The best one to use is either a table saw if you have one that runs off the battery or if you can bring it into a bee yard. But anything that's a circular saw like this is excellent. Um, saws all or something that moves like that is not as desirable because it creates more vibration and the young brood in the cells may be more disturbed than when it's just a blade quickly rotating with less vibration. And even the bees, the vibration is going to bother them more with the yeah. sawzall than it will yeah. for the other. Very good. Here we need to move fairly quickly. And as we go through, and the reason we need to go for it quickly is because I heard some thunder in distance. You don't want to do it under the rain or in inclement weather for sure. So you just take her 
whatever you take in your hands, uh, you shake and swipe the bees into the new box and you move on to the next uh, frame. Again, you need only to cut the frames that have brood on them. The rest you can remove altogether. Remember that because we did not find the queen in this hive, she may be on one of the walls and all of the equipment should be shaken and swiped straight into the hive to the extent possible. This is an intense part of the transfer, so I'm putting my uh, suit on and instead of shaking them down, I'm swiping them down in case there is a queen someplace on the wall. If worst comes to worst and if she is lost during the transfer, we do have eggs on the frames that we transferred, so they will be able to raise themselves a new queen if they have to, but I think it won't come down to that. Usually these transfers are quite successful. Then be prepared to remove everything from the apiary so they cannot return to the original box and be attracted by the smell of the box. bees flying around that's fine you shouldn't wait for them to join their sisters in the box because uh, they will be attracted by the smell of the bees inside the box and they will uh, enter through the entrance now we're ready to close the lid the entrance is open all of the bees are agitated but you will see them congregating around the entrance just within five to ten minutes. You see already some bees flying and entering at the right spot. What helps is that this spot is fairly close to where the original high was and where the original entrance was. And also during disturbance like that, bees start fanning and emitting certain attractant pheromone. You can see some bees there at the entrance standing with their uh, abdomen pointing outward and they're fanning their wings spreading this smell that shows the rest of the bees where the new entrance is. So all of these bees gradually will take flight and sense the smell coming from this entrance and rejoin their sisters there. After disturbance like that uh, there is a small chance that the whole colony may abscond leaving this box altogether. It usually does not happen when they have their brood preserved with them and in our case we transferred all the brood so they will likely to stay put in the box but if you are working with southern bees that are more likely to abscond after disturbance you may want to close this entrance so that it's on this slot position it allows all the bees to re-enter the box through the slots but the slots are too small for the queen to leave the hive so they won't be able to depart and after a few days reopen it so that uh, there can be regular traffic of bees coming in and out. With these bees I don't think it will be necessary so we'll leave this entrance uh, wide open as it is now. Oh, so. Another awesome day working the bees. You guys it gets a little hot you're wearing those bee suits you know you're a little nervous because the bees. The one in the uh, forest again was a little bit more exciting uh, than the one that we had out in the field and we didn't even really go in there we were going to put a couple of those frames in there from that box that we transferred uh, but they were so riled up we actually put those out in the pasture uh, to make sure that they had a little bit of honey out there so if you guys got any questions about these bee videos make sure you're leaving them down below and make sure you catch our playlist with all this information in there if you're a first time beekeeper or even if you're pretty good and you're wanting to hone your skills or like myself i was into it for a while 
and I just wanted to keep researching so I could better my game and I could do it more natural because just like everyone else we learned what was taught us by the Amish in our area and they were using the sugar water and they were having problems with mites matter of fact speaking of mites did you see anything while we were messing around with the hives about any mites or I any kind of see aromas any yeah and actually then if you look into the trays are uh, in the hive in the field yeah you won't find too many mites in there. Yeah, yeah, so that's important too, because with the natural beekeeping, they build up the immunities and they're able to battle that stuff a lot better. You so. know, we today even have scientific evidence there at Cornell University, when they looked at the mite loads of commercial bees, it was almost through the roof. And when they look at the mite loads of the colonies that started as local wild swarm, it was very close to zero. Yes, yeah, just like you guys. When you guys keep your immune systems good and in check and you're eating right and not eating a lot of sugar and processed foods and the white devils, you're going to be great. You're going to be able to battle flus and colds and things that come your way. But when you get that immune system compromised and you're drinking all those sugary drinks and monsters and Doritos and processed food and food out of a box, you get the slightest little sniffle on the colds and the flus and everything else. So learn from nature, you know, take care of yourself and you'll be able to take care of all these viruses and things that are going around uh, around your area and you'll be able to be a lot better for it. So don't forget, Leo has horizontalhive.com. You guys can go there, you can check out all of his information. We work really good with Leo, he's an open source guy. So if you guys want directions how you can build your own frame boxes, how you can build your own swarm catchers, your own uh, frames for inside the box, all that information is available for you guys at no charge. Yes, correct. And you know, talking about natural health, uh, I want to mention that the receiving a sting or two here and there from the bees <laughs> is probably an, is another benefit of beekeeping. Yeah, yeah. Some of my friends got into beekeeping specifically to get stung for health benefits. They actually but use the, that in the Orient, don't they? Like yeah, uh, they do. sting you for the for cures. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's another topic for another day, but it's uh, something that's helping many people with their conditions where drugs can be of no help. Right, so there you go too. And, and uh, no, some of you guys had questions uh, in the previous video when Dr. Leo was here, not the swarm one that I just did, but the one before that. Uh, we were working with the bees and you know, he had his hands out there and even like in this video. And you guys were asking why he was running the smoke over his hands, okay? And he could tell you why he does that. Well, it discourages bees from stinging, uh, but again, if you don't want to get any stings at all, just wear protection. Sure. Put on your suit, put on your gloves, and then the chance of getting stung is very slim. But I uh, work with the bees with my bare hands because I enjoy it better. And also I have more feeling when I grab frames and everything. And finally, when I receive a sting, uh, that's not a big deal for me at all. I see it as free. Epitherapy with bee venom. Yeah. A local naturopath will charge you sixty dollars <laughs> to give you four or three stings. If you have your own bees, you can get as many as you like at no cost. And the reason why he was uh, putting the smoke over his hand after he got stung was because bees actually re release a pheromone and that signals the other bees to come and help in on the stings uh, to help protect the hive, okay? So when he gets stung, then he smokes his hand and then that'll help break that scent away from the other bees. That's correct. Yeah. So make sure you guys check out his books. They're all online at horizontalhive.com. Keeping bees with a smile, yep. keeping bees in horizontal hives. Right. And this is basically a horizontal hive, but it's a Langstrom hive, right? So today we saw both. We saw the Langstroth hive with longer frames. Right. And we transferred these bees into the Layens hive. Layens hive. Layens is the author of the book Keeping Bees in Horizontal Hives. Right. And his hive model is number one, one most widespread horizontal hive in the world. Right. So from now on, we'll be able to compare the development of the colonies in both hive models. You guys are not going to get bee information like this on any other channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Give us a thumbs up on your way out. Say thanks to Dr. Leo. It's a five-hour drive to get up here. And I think we might see him later on this summer, is it? Well, well when the time comes to pull honey. Yeah, he's going to come back and pull honey with us. Also, he'll be at the Homesteading Life Conference in August in Hannibal, Missouri. It's the first Sunday and Monday every year in Hannibal, Missouri, where he'll be doing workshops and speaking on natural beekeeping and the like. So make sure you guys get us on your calendar. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And uh, I think we're hot, sweaty, and done for the day. So as always, thanks for coming. We Thank really you, appreciate it. My pleasure. You. Yeah. And we'll see you guys on the next video. See ya. Oh, and by the way, for the sake of clarity, because Dr. Leo wanted me to mention this to you guys. 
You can set out a swarm box, a swarm trap. We did that in a video. I'll leave a link for it down below if you guys want to see that. And you can catch a swarm with a swarm box, okay? The reason why we are dealing with these uh, horizontal hives the way we are is because we caught a swarm and actually put it in the horizontal hive box in the forest and we've split that now. Okay, we used a swarm box, it's in the video below. And the hive that's out here in the pasture, we actually had a, high, a swarm move into it, a queenless swarm, they hung out there for a while, and then we split that as well, okay? So it was just a fluke. So we don't want you guys to watch these videos about these horizontal hives and think that you have to have these horizontal hives to do any of this stuff. These methods work on any beehive. Okay, and then we explain the benefits of the horizontal hive. So we just wanted to make sure you guys understood that. You don't have to collect the swarms inside the horizontal hives and then cut all the frames and everything. We're basically dealing with what we have, okay, on hand at the time that this all happens and then making it work from there. Just like in the swarm video, uh, you guys were telling me about getting a vacuum and stuff like that. Um, I've had, out of the eight years I've been collecting bees or, you know, managing bees here on the property, I've had one other time other than this that the hives were strong enough to actually make a swarm and we caught those successfully. So to have a vacuum just laying around to suck up bees on a swarm uh, is just not on my radar right now. It might be in the future, uh, but we'll see. So just, we're showing you guys how to deal with things as they pop up with items that you have on hand and hopefully that clears up some of the gray area. See you guys tomorrow.